What's going on guys? My name is Anthony and welcome to your very first Unity game tutorial. In these videos, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use Unity 5 or whatever Unity is currently out, but right now it's Unity 5. So I'm going to be teaching you guys all the techniques that you're going to need to know to make your own video games in 2D and even 3D. <clears throat> so in this tutorial series, um, or in this tutorial, sorry, I'm just going to be teaching you guys some of the fundamentals that you need to know to get you yourself running with Unity. Um, so in this series we're going to be recreating this game that I'm showing you right here. So let me just give it a quick run here. Um, don't try and recreate it right now. I'm going to go through this step by step. So when you start the game the ball starts rolling down the alley and it knocks over the pins and the ball falls down. So it's a really simple kind of, it's more of just almost like a movie but it's a game being rendered in real time. Um, but it has all the fundamentals that you're going to need in order to make your own games. So yeah, let's get started. Um, the first thing you want to do is obviously install Unity. Let me go and show you how to do that. So open up Google Chrome or whatever the heck you use for your browser. And type in Unity Game Engine. And the first link should come up. It's unity3d.com. I'll put the link down in the description. Um, so this is the website. Just go to Get Unity or whatever the heck it says. And you're going to want to download the personal edition. So just hit the free download, follow the installer, and then you'll have Unity installed on your system. Um, it might take a little while, it's quite big. And so once you have Unity installed, pin it to your taskbar because you're going to be using it a lot for these tutorials, obviously. And um, we're just going to open up a new Unity window. And the first thing you're going to see is this uh, window pop up. You're not going to see any of these projects. These are the projects that I've worked on. So by default it's going to be blank and you're going to be able to create a new project up here so just hit new project and then we're supposed to give our project a name so I'm just going to call it bowling demo it's allowed to have spaces and just give it a location I like to save it on my desktop because it's easier and this game is going to be from a 2d point of view so I'm just going to select 2d um, the, thing, the cool thing about unity is you could actually mix 2d and 3d assets in your game and yeah it's actually pretty cool so we're going to go ahead and create the project and unity will go and do its stuff in the background and it'll open up the unity game engine editor now by default yours isn't going to look quite like mine right now because i actually have mine customized and i'm going to show you guys how to do that so up in the top right up here you're going to see a little drop down that says layout just go and click on that and by default it's going to be on default and this is what yours will most likely look like um, I don't like this layout particularly, so I usually go and hit default, and then I go to tall, and I don't even use this, I customize it a bit. Uh, the first thing I do is I go and take the game tab right here, and I dra click and drag it, and then I dock it down here. So then I have my scene view up here, and my game view down here, and the last thing that I actually do is in this project pane right here, I go and hit this arrow button with a little hamburger thing. I don't know what to call it. It's like three lines. It kind of looks like a hamburger. Um, and I go and change it to one column layout. Just makes things a little bit cleaner. And then I go and make this a bit smaller so I have more room to play around in my scene. Um, so if you guys have no idea what you're looking at right now, don't worry. I'm going to go through this as quick as possible so you guys can get in, uh, get into game development quickly. So the first thing I'm going to teach you guys about is what is the actual scene. So the scene is basically where you're going to be manipulating all your game objects. So in a game you're going to want to go and add things to your game like sprites, sounds, and other things. You're going to be manipulating these within the scene view. So to kind of get a grasp of what I'm talking about right now, I've went ahead and actually created some um, game objects right here. So these are the things that I made just in Inkscape. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. Actually, what am I doing? Not copying it. Um, you could drag and drop it into the, the project if you'd like, or you can go and right click in the project pane and go import new asset. The thing with the Unity free edition is that you can only import one asset at a time, which is kind of annoying. Um, but if you only have a few assets it's not that bad um, but if you want to do it quickly I suggest just using the drag and drop method and they'll drop them right into the project 
Um, so that leads me to the project window. What is this? This basically is going to be a hierarchical structure of all the files that are in your game. So you're going to have sounds, you're going to have scripts, and you're going to have uh, images, sprites, all those types of things. They're all going to be located in your project. And what I like to do is I like to organize these in folders. So you're going to hit this little create button right here and then hit folder. And I'm going to name it sprites. So sprites are just basically game images. And I'm going to select both of these by holding down control and clicking. And I'm going to drag it into my sprites folder. Now it's all organized nicely and things are a little bit cleaner because they're in a folder now. And you especially want to do this in bigger games. In this game, it's really not necessary since we pretty much only have this in our game. Um, and the rest is just objects that are made within Unity, which I'm going to get to right now. So if I want to go and add something to my scene, I'm going to go to Game Object, 3D Object, and I can add a cube. So as I said, we've made a 2D game, but we're allowed to put 3D objects in it. So in order to move this around, we're going to go up to the top here and hit this little arrow uh, button. This basically puts handles on it and we're able to manipulate the transform of the object. And as I'm doing this, you'll notice up in my inspector over here, up in the right, it has some properties. And as I move it, you'll see that the position is changing. My X position is changing now. And then if I go and move the Y, the Y position actually changes, which is really handy to see a visual in the scene and also see what the number is um, up in the inspector. And I'm able to manipulate it like this. If I click and drag on the X, it'll actually uh, move the position around and I can set values if I like. If I just want to zero it out again, go zero, tab zero, tab zero. And another um, transformation uh, tool that we have is our scaling transform. So two over from the transform up in the top left, if you hit that, you're able to scale the cube on the X and on the Y. All I want to do is scale it on the X for now. And if I move it down, going back to transform, we're going to make the platform where the ball is going to roll across. And then if I want to duplicate this object, since I don't want I'm too lazy to go game object, 3D object, then cube, if I select our um, cube in the scene view or select it in the hierarchy, I can go and hold control D and that'll duplicate it and you'll see that in the hierarchy now we have a cube one and we're going to call this our ramp and then the other cube we're going to call our ground so our hierarchy basically just depicts what's in our scene so if I want to move my ramp now I can move it up and obviously I don't want my ramp to be this big so I'm going to scale it like so and I'm also going to move it move it up a little bit and across and I'm just gonna rotate this now by hitting the rotate tool up in the top left and I can go and manipulate this over here I'm gonna manipulate the z-axis and I'm gonna spin it negative 45 degrees just like that and then I have a nice little ramp I can tweak this around if I click and hold inside this blue little box I'm allowed to manipulate it on all um, two axes right now just like so so I could fine-tune it and then the next thing I want to add is our actual pin so we're actually first we're gonna add our ball so in our project window we can just go click and drag it right into our game and as you can see our ball is looking absolutely huge right now oh yeah and by the way all these assets um, the ball and the pin they're all going to be located in the description. I should have said this before. I'll probably annotate the video so you guys know beforehand. Um, so yeah, if I want to scale the ball right now, all I have to do is go to the scale, and I'm going to scale it to 0. Eh, 0.6 and then by 0. 0.6. Make sure you scale them both so they don't look all disproportionate. And now, as you can see, on our ball we have our transform component and we have a sprite renderer component. If I go and untick this box you'll see that my sprite disappears from the screen because we're no longer using the sprite renderer component. We're obviously that's not going to be desired. We're going to actually want to render our ball in our game but we're also going to want to add a couple more components. We're going to want to first go down to this button hit add component and we're going to go to physics. We're going to want to add a rigid body so our actual ball can be affected by gravity. 
So go ahead, hit rigid body, and we can tweak some values. I'm going to tweak the mass. So if I give it some more mass, it'll um, just to about 20, I guess, uh, 25. And I'm also going to add a collider. Um, actually, before I do that, if I just keep the rigid body and I hit play, I'll show you guys what happens. As you can see, my ball falls right through the map, which is obviously not what we want. So I'm going to have to add a collider to this ball. And you'll see when we created our cube, by default over in the inspector, it has a box collider on it, which is what we want. So this has collision on it, but our circle doesn't, which is why that circle actually fell through the boxes, as well as this box also has a box collider on it. So in order to add a um, sphere collider on it, we're just going to go select our ball, hit add component, and then from there we're going to select physics and then the sphere collider. And as you can see, it tried to approximate uh, the size of our uh, the size of our ball, but it kind of failed. If you go and run it, you'll see that the collision's way off. So in order to fix that, all you have to do is go over here to our sphere collider, and then you'll see a field called radius, and we're just going to tweak that, get it approximate. So that's about good right there. You'll see that the green outline inside of our scene view it matches up with the orange sprite and if we run it now you'll see that our collision is much better so in order to make our game a little bit more interesting let's go ahead and add the pins that we're going to add so the ball can run into them so in order to add the pins again just go down to the pin down here in the project window and we're just going to drag it out and the pin is obviously obscenely big just like the ball was we're going to go ahead and shrink that down. We're going to go maybe 0 0.6 by 0 0.6. Yeah, that's probably about good. Actually, no, a little bit bigger. 0 0.7 by 0 0.7. So you can tweak the values how you, how you like. Um, that looks about good to me. And in order to get this shape to have a collider, because obviously if we run it right now, just like we did with the ball previously, if we go and run this right now, our ball is going to roll, and it's going to go roll right through our pin, which is not what we want. So to add collision to this, we're obviously not going to want a box collider or a sphere collider. We're going to want something a little bit more complex. So hit the Add Component button, and hit Physics again. What you're going to want to do is use the Mesh Collider. Sorry, my mistake. Instead of adding a Mesh Collider, we're going to select our pin, and we're just going to go ahead and add... Not physics 2D, Anthony, what are you doing? Let's go ahead and add a capsule collider. Now, as you can see, it did an okay job at approximating it, but we're going to want to just shrink the radius a bit. And there we go. Now we have a nice capsule around our pin. So if we go ahead and run this now, you'll see that our ball is rolling. It's rolling. Oh, and it ran into it, but as you can see, it just kind of stopped, and our pin didn't fall over. So in order for our pin to fall over, we're going to have to add a rigid body to it so it's affected by gravity. So again, go to physics and then rigid body. And we can give it, the, give it a different mass. I'm just going to leave it for now, see how it acts. Again, a lot of this stuff can be uh, just trial and error. And boop, there goes our pin. I can go ahead and duplicate our pin. Go Just go select it, control D, select it again, control D. And we're going to add one more, control D. So now if we play our game, you'll see that the ball is going to roll. And then it's going to run into the pins, and it's going to slide them off the map. Oh, is the last one going to go? Boo! There it goes. So some really cool physics, and look at how quick that was. We could also add a particle effect to our game. So it's really easy to add particle effects within Unity. We're just going to go game object and particle system and right off the bat we get a default particle system that doesn't look bad actually and I'm actually going to use it I'm going to tweak it a little bit so we can move it around just like we did with all our other game objects and you'll notice over in the hierarchy over here we also have it showing um, I'm just going to go ahead and change the color in order to do that select the particle system and under the particle system component we're going to want to modify the start color just by selecting this white little box and I'm going to modify it to a uh, kind of a purplish color. Kind of looks cool. I'm going to move it and then move it down a bit so it looks like our guy's kind of like in like a little spiral of light. Um, we could also change the size right over here, start size. So it's a little bit smaller so it looks a little bit better. 
and you could add gravity to this so if we make it negative gravity gravity it goes a lot quicker if we make it positive gravity you'll see that it's just kind of like going up and then falling down I'm gonna keep it going a little bit faster just like that at negative 2.3 so that looks really nifty. It's actually showing this animation even though we're not playing our game. And that leads me to another point within Unity. If I go ahead and run it by using this play button again, um, we're actually allowed to modify values while you're playing the game in real time. So as you can see, we have a purple particle effect. What if I wanted to change that to a blue? Well, I could change that in real time while the game's actually running, which is an awesome feature inside of Unity. So I can even change the alpha of the particle, which makes it look um, a lot cooler, actually. I'm going to keep it at about 88 alpha. I think that looks kind of nifty. But the thing is, once you hit close, and then you go and exit the game, your particle effect goes back to its default value. So remember that. So I'm going to want to change that back to 88, or whatever, 87, 90, sure. And yeah, that's... I. Th think about it that I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Actually, before we go, we're going to want to save our scene. So if we went and quit right now, it would say, do you want to save the changes you made? Hit save. And then this is basically saving your level. So we're just going to call it, there's only one level in this game. So we're going to call it game scene. And we're also going to put this in a folder. It's always nice to keep things in folders. Just in case we had multiple scenes later on, um, you're going to want to save it in a folder. So after we hit save, it'll quit, and you'll see I didn't really mean to quit. Um, what's it called? Bowling demo. And you'll see now that we saved in our project, we actually have our game scene. Um, if we had multiple scenes, we would be able to switch between scenes in Unity by just double clicking on it. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial. Make sure you leave a comment down below. I'm going to be making a game series and we're basically going to, from start to finish, we're going to make a full-blown game. Um, nothing too, too complicated, but give me some suggestions down below and let me know what you thought about this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.